Now the problem with the, the, the solution we saw before to the Malthusian uh, um, problem is that uh, family planning uh, does not work. And, you know, why doesn't it really work? Because as it turns out empirically, people just have the number of, ch of children they really want, uh, regardless of the country. So if, they're, um, if, if you're in a poor country and you have a lot of children, it's because you really want to have a lot of children. And, uh, you know, the second theory of why population might not be bad for development uh, uses this, this as background. So the second theory says, you know, that maybe it's not population, but what's causing uh, um, the lack of development, but maybe is, you know, uh, increases in income, what's really causing uh, population growth to decline. So, you know, in this sense, as countries become richer, as income per capita increases, um, families to choose to have less children because of uh, you know some underlying uh, causes, and we really see that empirically this is the case. Richer countries, mo most countries actually, forty percent of the of the women in this world have uh, either two or less um, children, and this is a phenom phenomenon we see as countries become richer. Uh, um, you know, the number, the average number of, of, of um, children per family approaches uh, this, this, you know, two uh, threshold. While in poor countries, women have, you know, five, eight children. So what Gary Becker said, you know, was that, you know, yes, families love their children. Um, so, you know, that enters into their utilities, the number of children, but also children have a cost. You have to kind of like, you know, pay for children. You have to educate them. And there, is, there might be some, some other costs attached to, uh, to having children. So in principle, you know, you might think of like a demand for children. Yes, when you're richer, you can have uh, more children, which is kind of like the, the Malthusian um, uh, theory, right? Uh, but also you have to take into account this, this cost, right? Whenever the cost of having children uh, increases, demand for children uh, decreases. Um, so, you know, what is this cost of having children? In, in principle, in richer economies, uh, as you know, what usually happens is that uh, women start entering the labor force and, and acquire higher education uh, than in developing countries. So, so the human capital of the women go, go up and also their salaries. So, uh, meaning, since women can have higher salaries and, and are actively working, uh, the opportunity cost of having children, you know, like the time it takes to raise uh, each child um, is very valuable because, you know, they could be working and they could be er earning income. For a family, the costs in terms of opportunity cost of having a high number of children would increase dramatically as, as economies become richer. And also, you know, also as, 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 as economies develop, the cost of education and, you know, the, the level of education that is needed for a child to be able to be uh, um, successful in the, in, the, in the labor market is higher. So there's more uh, tuition costs and more uh, other education-related costs attached to each child. So in principle, uh, you know, parents, in, in, as the, the economies develop, um, shift from, you know, from having more children to having um, uh, children with higher quality in terms of you know, education. So the investment per child is actually much, much higher in, um, in rich countries. And that's, you know, another reason why we might see this uh, um, uh, income uh, affecting population growth negatively. Because basically, in, in richer countries, whenever Y is higher, um, the cost of having children is, is, is much higher. So that leads to the population reducing the amount of uh, uh, children they want to have which is exactly what we see in the data.